for our receiving the Lord of our hand and on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice, after supper, saying, This chalice is new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as long as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with the Spirit. Nice to see you all this morning. Today we're offering the Mass for Wilford Prados. Let us begin by calling to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask of us a very virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me with all our house. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for Wilford Prados. O oh God, who are prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Chapter 11, verse 18 and 21 through 30. Brothers and sisters, since many boast according to the flesh, I too will boast. To my shame, I say that we were too weak. But what anyone dares to boast of, I am speaking in foolishness, I also dare. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they children of Israel? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I am talking like an insane person. I am still more, with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, far more beatings, and numerous brushes with death. Five times at the hands of the Jews I received forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I passed a night and a day on the deep on frequent journeys, in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my own race, dangers from Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers at sea, dangers among false brothers, in toil and hardship, through many sleepless nights, through hunger and thirst, through frequent fastings, through cold and exposure. And apart from these things, there is the daily pressure upon me of my anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak, and am I not weak? Who is led to sin, and am I not indignant? If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Responsorial <laughs> Psalms number 34. From all their distress, God rescues the just. From all their distress, God has us. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. From all their distress, God has us. us. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. 
When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. From all the distress, God has to the just. Please stand. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and decay destroy and thieves break in and steal, but store up treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor decay destroys, nor thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. The lamp of the body is the eye. If your eye is sound, your whole body will be filled with light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be in darkness. And if your light in you is darkness, how great will the darkness be? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> this Gospel reminds me of a good friend of mine. He's a priest up in Jackson, Father Jerry Hurley. He's in Flowood. Back in the day, Jerry in the seminary were in school together. Jerry is about three years ahead of me. And he came out to Mississippi as a, as a deacon and he did his internship. And then when they went back to the seminary, they would give the homilies to us. And I remember Jerry saying about this gospel with a real Mississippi accent, not a park accent. He said, make your bank in heaven, not heaven in the bank. <laughs> and, and that stayed with me all these years. And it's a very good point. The Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount is all about how to be happy. And unfortunately, the world tells us that we, what makes you happy is power, pleasure, wealth, or honor. But they are false happinesses. They won't bring you lasting happiness. Uh, Jesus uh, makes clear what makes, brings us lasting happiness. And St. Augustine said it best. God has made us for himself and our hearts are restless until they rest in God. So it, it really, it, what makes people happy is being close to God and having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you have Jesus, that's your greatest treasure. So store up your relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for Wilford Prados, for whom the Mass has been offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick. We remember especially Molly Jimenez, Deacon Roberto's wife. Also, um, um, Ree Spence is very close to the end of life. Chris Siffel, uh, Marge Blaisdell, and the many people who have asked for special prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We have many people with dealing with cancer, especially uh, Terry's uh, mom, uh, uh, Joy Swanson, and for, uh, may they find a cure for all cancer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And uh, people are still dealing with the coronavirus. We pray that people will uh, find um, a way to stay safe from the virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the continued success of our church building project and for all the people that are working so hard on it, may God reward them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the quad process as they continue to grow in their faith and may they always know Jesus is our greatest treasure, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank God for this day. We ask God to answer all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed is God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. <clears throat> Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very Son, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just to give you thanks and to raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every tongue, people, and nation. And having filled her with life by the power of your spirit, you never cease to her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom, and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly near, while with all the church, as one voice, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of us, and the of holy glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This morning we got a quote from St. Francis de Sales on the Eucharist. He said, When you have received him, stir up your heart to do him homage. Speak to him about your spiritual life, gazing upon him in your soul, where he is present for your happiness. Welcome him as warmly as possible, and behave outwardly in such a way that your actions may give proof to all of his presence. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when his once for his disciples are not for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to supper, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until we come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his past and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and unto the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church, which is the most holy trinity, past Christiane. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, and all the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. 
Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, who blessed Joseph our spouse, with the apostles and, all, and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. But the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only to say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ be preserved for eternity. Amen. Amen. <coughs> like Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May it partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his cores in heaven. Who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now for our aid. Good morning. Good morning. This guy, St. Paul, he was a fighter. I mean, really. Before he went to Damascus, he wanted to wipe Christianity off the face of the earth. He didn't like Christians. And he got, now, I looked this up this morning. As the crow flies, it's 136 miles from Jerusalem to Damascus. He didn't fly. He didn't have a car either. He had either had to ride a horse or walk by car from Jerusalem to Damascus it's 1,900 miles. Don't ask me how it, how they go up and down the mountain. But 136 miles by air, and Paul walked 1,900 miles, and it wasn't on the Interstate 10. Okay. But he went, he went to get rid of the Christians in the world. I mean, he wanted to wipe us out. And then Jesus knocked him down, probably by lightning, but it was a great light, 
and he came up blind and he had to go into Damascus. Now, if you drive from here to California, when you get there, you're gonna be tired. I, I'm, I mean, I'm gonna be tired. So Paul was probably real tired by the time he got to Damascus. And Jesus said, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, sir? So they got, they, they met each other. Paul was still a fighter. Only now he was fighting for Christianity. And the Jews said, I'm a Jew. He said, I am too. That I'm a son of Abraham. I am too. And they probably said, I'm a Christian. And he said, I am too. Paul was a fighter. The guy over there on the patty, he says, I'm a fighter and I want you to be one too. That's what the quad's all about. Disciples. We are supposed to be disciples of the Lord Jesus. That's what Paul was. Called himself the 12th apostle or the 13th apostle. He wasn't he didn't know Jesus personally, but he fought for him personally. He fought for us. When I, when I, I, I mean, I've read this reading, I don't know, 10, 12, maybe 15 times. It reminded me of someone. And I didn't know if I was gonna say this or not, but there was another man in my lifetime, in your lifetime, who fought for his beliefs. He fought for equality. Martin Luther King. And when he was doing it, I didn't like it. I'm, I'm being honest. I thought he was just another one of those characters. But he did it peacefully. He did it the way Paul did it. He did it the way Jesus wants you and I to do it. The second commandment. First one, love the Lord your God. Second one, love your neighbor. And it doesn't matter what color your neighbor is. It doesn't matter. Well, hmm? But it, doesn't matter whether he wants you as they to grow up high or not, you're still supposed to love him. Amen. Amen. Very good, all right. Thank you. Got a cute email here. A pastor grew watermelons to supplement his meager income. He was doing all right. But it bothered him that local kids would sneak into his patch at night and eat his melons. After some thought, he came up with an idea he felt sure would scare the kids away. The pastor made a sign reading, Warning, one of these watermelons has been injected with rat poison and posted it in the field. Pleased with himself, he went to bed. The next day, the pastor surveyed the field and found that no watermelons were missing. But there was a sign next to his reading. Now there are two. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord be with you. <laughs> and may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Go in peace and make disciples. Let us pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit.